Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. Hope you all are doing well. Today we've got another track car review and here with me is um, Alberto. And we're in Chicago here and we've got his 93 Civic EG. How long have you had this car, man? I've had it about uh, four years now. About four years? Mm -hmm. From when you first got it and you started doing mods to it, how, how long was that process? Uh, immediately. So I bought this the shell about four years ago with the intention to road race and do track days and eventually get better, possibly time and tech series. Uh, since the moment I got it, I just been focused on building it to uh, have a good platform and then slowly getting my skills up to the car's capabilities. Okay, cool. So that was gonna be actually my next question. It was the, the goal of the car uh, when you first purchased it. So the goal is, was to, was to track the car. Correct. Next goal is to sub 140s at Gingerman. That's my <laughs> next goal. That's everybody's goal. <laughs> what kind of lap times are you hitting right now with it? The fastest lap time I've hit is 144. 144. Uh, so when I first started on the track, I was doing like 152s, 150s. So I've been able to cut, you know, 10 to 12 seconds off of it, which I'm super happy about. But, you know, I got to get that sub 140. Let's uh, take a walk around the car. Sure. And just kind of uh, point out like the exterior pieces. I noticed you got obviously aren't factory fenders here so yeah factory fenders uh i did have a buddy pretty much cut it out to make it look like the track life fenders but it's actually the oem fenders oh nice they were cut uh, we welded a piece of metal right here and then the bottom to kind of give it that that look yeah yeah because i, I did think it was the uh what was it track, track life? life yeah track, uh, yeah i think it's a track life yeah track life that's it i thought it was a track life fender but yeah, no it's, it's cool that you modded it yeah oem well i mean aftermarket oem but you know <laughs> right, same right, thing right, right. uh which is great because then if i do go in the time attack series you know i can still use it yeah uh, for our, you know grid life things like yeah, that it's so. like the same type of material because that's what they're looking for right? absolutely OEM material looks like you got a spoon style duckbill back here yes sir carbon fiber no. I'm looking to probably upgrade to the PCI on uh, the next year, Got year it. or so. Uh, are, you, probably... are, you, are you gonna do the um... the Swan type? Yeah, the Swan neck. Type. Yep, the Swan neck. Cool. That's the one I'm looking for. Uh, I really want to get it because I can notice like uh, turn four in Gingerman, it gets really light, uh, and like small kinks and turns like that. Uh, I can feel the back end get really light, so I want the extra added downforce in the back to keep me planted. I see. I see. It looks like you got a carbon hood just to finish it off. Of carbon hood. I mean, I got the hood. It was super, super dull. Even right now, it's a little dull. But I ended up sanding it down myself and then re-clear coating. Added some shine to it. But eventually, I will get that replaced to hey, official. It's a track car, right? So exactly. I figure it's lightweight. It's pretty. good to go. And on the front here, we got a... I, I'm not familiar with this lip. It is an eBay lip. Okay. And so it's basically just an eBay lip. I found one that I liked and ordered it. And it had a buddy paint it for me. It does look good, though. Thank you. It looks good. I used to have a, a splitter. So it actually acted as uh, the reason why I wanted it, it kind of acted like an air dam too. I see. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it was not totally flat, but it did provide some air damness to it, you know? Yeah. Uh, um, got the uh, Advanti Storm wheels on it, 15 by 8s. Okay. Uh, Toyo tires, 205.50. Might get this, get this tire. This one's tires off. Eight. You see the, oh, yeah, the yeah. stickers coming off? <laughs> uh, but 205.50 tires on it, 15 by 8s. These are pretty much my just my street tires. Okay. I have a whole set of tires and wheels set up for the track, which okay. have usually uh, Hoosier A7s or R7s on them. Those are 15 by 8s as well. Uh, my Hoosiers, I run 225 45s on them, uh, of course, 15s on them. And then I have a, a wet setup as well. I'm running the Hoosier wets. Uh, I haven't tried them yet, but I'm excited because typically I'm, you know, a little nervous driving in the rain. It gets yeah, a little sketchy yeah, yeah. out there. So I want as much traction and much cheater tire as possible, especially when we're talking about the rain. Let's talk about your brake setup here. Okay. Uh, I got the Type R brakes uh, with the Mini Cooper rotors uh, with the 2007 TSX pads, the DTC 60 pads on them. The brakes are actually uh, power stop brakes. I went with the drilled and slotted, which I might change up in the next uh, year, but they did help with overall temperature. So when I had the centric uh, blanks, my temperature were getting around 700 to 800 degrees. When I switched to the Jordan slot, it immediately cut it in half. Oh, I was seeing really? like 430, even some spots at 380 degrees. Oh, wow. wow. Uh, and we actually tested it, the difference on my, my brother's car. He was running the blanks and with mine. Same track, same driving style, et cetera. We saw a ha you know, half the temperature difference on mine versus his. And completely, and before that, I was experiencing some brake fade. And after I made the switch to Jordan slot, it, Zero brake fade all weekend, whether you're talking about a hot Honda Meat track, yeah, yeah, yeah. track day or just normal track day, zero brake fade. And then on the rear, uh, what, what trim level is this actually? Is it a DX? CX. I CX. Think. Yep. Oh yeah, it doesn't have the side yep. holding. So. The rear brakes, uh, I know the CX doesn't come with disc brakes. So what uh, setup do you have in the back here? So in the back, I just went with a typical uh, EG rear disc conversion. I was going to go with the EP3 road, uh, calipers in the back, but I didn't want to deal with the upside down yep. bleeding. So I just went with the stock um, calipers in the rear. As far as pads, I have HP pluses in the rear. 
uh, to kind of give a more bias in the front. That's the combination that I've, I've been seeing quite a bit. So. Yeah. And as far as the rears, like you barely even use the rears. That that track car over there, we've had HP pluses on there for the past four years, and we have yet to change them in four years. They still have lots of life on them. Four years. Yep. That's good. Good. Good savings on Exa consumables. Exactly. <laughs> we spend a lot on the front brakes, but the rear, we save a little money. <laughs> it's so light. Yep. Yeah, yeah. All right. Let's go over your uh, suspension setup. So what do you have for uh, coilovers? So I have just the OG setup. So we got the Coney Yellows with the ground control sleeves. As far as I got the hard race upper control arms in the front, hard rubber. And then I got the True Hard Spherical lower control arms uh, for the front as well. And then uh, what do you have for the rear here? Uh, for the rear, I have the Skunk 2 lower control arms. And then I all the bushings would be hard race as far as, you know, the rear trailing arm bushings, okay. things like that. Those okay. are hard race, all hard rubber. Sway bars too? I only have one in the rear. It's an ASR sway bar, okay. like the sway, a, a sway bar brace. On the front, I don't have a sway bar, but I'm looking to get a GSR side on the front. Okay. All right. So uh, let's go over your power plant set up here what uh obviously it's a k but yeah <laughs> so I, 2008 uh acura tsx motor so i got the k24 in it uh completely bone stock uh, internal wise uh switched out the valve cover to a charlie shout yeah. out to charlie for that valve yeah. cover this is actually one of the the last batch he made as far as the red with the cnc in it so yeah, you got lucky i got that. lucky got the <laughs> last batch so thank you charlie for sending that out uh eventually i am going to get a catch can right here i'm going to replace this guy and there's actually going to be a catch can molded into here. My buddy's making that for me. Okay, cool. Had uh, got an RBC intake manifold, which I had marked for 1.6, actually port match it, and actually have a B-series throttle body on this. Uh, a B-series? B-series throttle body, 70 mil. The reason why I went with B-series, because at the time, there wasn't a TPS adapter for a B-series. So they would, uh, Mark told me that K-series TPS would always pop at the track, especially with high temps. That's what I've been hearing. Yep. <laughs> a lot of failures I see at the track with guys with K-series is like, uh, I went through three TPSs this week. I'm like, what? Yeah. <laughs> are you going through so many throttle position sensors? So, okay, that makes sense. Then. Yeah. So, I mean, I mean, I've been tracking it for three years. Never had an issue with TPS. So, as far as using the B series throttle body, it does work. Just need an adapter in order to mount it to that. Uh, we got the hybrid racing uh, intake right here. I like it because it's not made out of metal. It's made out of this cool material. I don't know what it is, but like a silicone. Yeah, like a silicone base. Your, uh, hoses are made out of. Exactly. So as far as it doesn't retain heat, things like that. So it keeps it nice and cool. Yeah. Un intake air temps are always nice and money. Goes right underneath here. So it's like a colder intake, which I, I love. It's a stock motor internally? Yeah. Stock motor internally, 100%. On pump gas still? Yeah. Running okay. 93. 93. Tuned by? Uh, it's actually not tuned. Oh, it's not tuned. So okay. my buddy had a similar set of what bigger injectors, uh -huh. right? That was tuned by Mikey. That put down 230 horsepower-ish. Uh, but I'm assuming I'm putting out maybe 215, 220 based on the difference in the fuel injectors and fuel pump size. But I mean, I put it in and it ran fine. So I was like, all right, well, let's just send it, you know? <laughs> yeah. I see you got a, like an air motive inline filter and you remove the whole OEM. Uh, Correct. Air motive inline filter, air motive fuel pressure regulator. I actually got them from my previous build. I actually used to have a, a Scion TC that I was building. Uh, had that, that was my first car built it, you know, turbocharged it, things like that. And I'm pushing like 500 horsepower. And the very first grid life that I had signed up for, it blew the motor like a month beforehand. Motor after motor, engine after engine, ended <laughs> up just tossing that TC away. Uh, and then you just got this thing. And so I kept a few pieces from that build. Uh, some of the fuel lines are from that build. The fuel filters from that, and also the fuel pressure regulators from that build. Got it, all aeromotive stuff. So yep. Yeah. Passport mounts, looks like two. Yep. Uh, has four mounts. I had a mark from one six powder coat in black to kind of go with my black thing that I had going yeah, on. Yeah, looks good. Like how it's uh, kind of carried on with the theme too. Yep. Radiator got a full uh, full size radiator. Again, I had a uh, mark from one six uh, customize it for me because at the time they didn't really have too many options available. Mm -hmm. uh, but this thing is awesome. Middle of the track racing, I probably see one eighty five as my temp. Nice. So it keeps it cool. Doesn't matter if it's summertime or whatnot, yeah. it stays cool. Yeah, that's that's really good. I think I see upwards of like two, just under 210 okay. as the hottest. But I, I, And that's still I'll, good. Yeah, I'll typically uh, float around like 200, but yeah, being at 185, that's that's way, way lower. Yeah, than so I'm never worried about it. My biggest concern with the case here is, is the oil temps. The oil temps get pretty hot. So I typically see oil temps close, getting the 260 to 270 mark. Got it. Which to me is a little, you know, on <laughs> the hot side. Yeah, a little on the hot side. Yep. Power, no power steering. No right. power steering. I had a power steering rack, but I ended up just looping it down there, so okay. I wouldn't have to deal with it. I'm thinking about adding power steering back to it. How is it without power steering right now? It's actually not too bad. Uh, not too bad, but this track car does have power steering, and you can definitely tell the difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you need a lot more input on this versus that one. Yeah, it is the better... Uh 
the rack for with a better ratio too, so the power rack. Yep. Um, so that's good. Let's talk about uh, your trans transmission. What do you got? Transmission, here? just a stock um, K20 trans, uh, uh, Type S trans from our RSX, uh, six speed trans. Shifter box is OEM as well. They came straight out of that same RSX. Okay. Ended up painting that black just to match the theme as well. Uh, have never had any issues with this. Got it. Uh, no LSD in it, so it's open diff. Open diff, and then. Uh, my next plan would probably be to get an OS gate and LSD in it. Yeah, that should definitely cut down some. Uh, oh, that's some what I'm always trying to get that sub 140. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, All right, walk me through what you have going on in the interior here. All right, so I got the OMP um, racing seat uh, with the race quip uh, harness on it. Uh, right now, it's just a four point harness. I do plan on putting the point right here so I can make it a six point harness. Yeah, the anti sub belt. Absolutely. Which is super important, I think. Any like head on collisions. Um, the, well, the reason why that belt is there is that so you don't slide under under that belt. So that's that would be pretty pretty nasty to see. Yeah, even in, even in hard braking, I feel myself slide. Like right? I have to adjust mid race because oh, I'm sliding really? underneath. Okay. It. So yeah. I definitely want to do that like ASAP yeah. for that steering wheel. Got the grip boy steering wheel, uh, sparkle hub. It is not quick release. Um, at the time, I didn't have a racing C or a roll case, so I was like, oh, I don't need quick release. But as I've upgraded my car, I kind of realized why racers do certain things <laughs> and quick release is one of them especially when you're trying to get over this bolster it uh -huh. does help yeah same thing with this wink mirror um when i first started racing i didn't know why racers would have that i was like oh that's just a ricer mod then when you're in your car harness helmet it's like it's kind of hard to see everywhere <laughs> i was like now i know why they have that so yeah. it does help i just put it on this year and it does make backing out of the the paddocks a lot easier yeah yeah visibility is a key because uh especially if you do you run a hans at all no. Device? Okay. Once you, when, if you decide to, and once you do, the visibility is even less at that point because the you, the rotation for your head is like maybe only this much, so you don't even have the ability to turn turn around and like look behind you at all. So but yeah, this thing yeah, having that is gonna be is gonna be huge. Got the Haltech wide band right here. Uh, again, this is part of my old TC build. So in that build, I had all Haltech everything at the time, and then when I scrapped it, I kept kept a little bit to always you know kind of remind me of that build and is the Haltech. I like the way it looked, and it reminds me of that build as well. Yeah, I plan to either go S2000 cluster right here or uh, Power Tune uh, cluster in the future. So ha still haven't decided. What's the uh, gauge setup you have? The Brad? gauges. Let's see if I can get them turned on for you. It will be um, uh, Pro Sport gauges. Got it. So oil temp, water temp, and then uh, the pressure as well. Again, shifter box is the OEM shifter box. I love it. Uh, absolutely. I see a lot of people run K2, hybrid, or the QD ones, mm -hmm. um, which is great. This thing was, I actually got it free from my buddy because he had upgraded to a K2 version. Yeah, yeah. Didn't need it. And I, I took it. I painted it black, and it's money. It looks good, actually, that, that you painted it black because a lot of people would just throw it in there and not do anything with the, the aesthetics of it. So I've actually, this is probably the first one I've seen that's painted. Thank you. Thank so, you. <laughs> it yeah. looks pretty good. <laughs> I, I, I love it. I'm telling you, when I'm on the track, I have, you know, I don't miss any gears, things like that. It's just perfect. And last but not least, mm. it, would probably be, it would be the roll cage. So got this done by Ruds Racing. Uh, so shout out to DJ for doing this uh, roll cage for me. I saw a half uh, cage there. Like yep. It. Um, it was one of the things. Uh, so last year, I actually ended up hitting a, a wall barrier. A tire barrier at yeah. Autobahn South. Yeah, you that showed me the side you were on right there. It was yeah. completely smashed. So the next thing I wanted to do was put in a safety device, especially a roll cage. Yeah, I think once uh, once you have an incident like that, or like a kind of almost kind of life changing kind of event, you're like, all right, let's step up the safety a little oh, bit. hundred <laughs> percent. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Name uh, one special thing that maybe if I were to walk up to the car and and, and don't see right away, or there's a special part or a, a story behind something uh, about the car, uh, what would that be? Uh, I would probably say that entire passenger side, because uh, what I tell you, that's uh, last year when I put into a, a tire barrier. Initially, I was defeated. I mean, you know, it took me forever to find a rust-free shell as clean as it was, uh, and then my car was completely wrecked on that side so initially when you walk up you wouldn't even know that that side was hit in fact that side looks better than this <laughs> side but it you know after that race you know i was kind of defeated um even when i get back on the track i was scared like i told you earlier my times at gingerman are 144 now when i got back on the track i was doing like 156. oh wow yeah like mentally i wasn't yeah. there yeah. And it took me lap after lap after trial and error, like just to kind of get back into it. So mm -hmm. that to me reminds me of what racing is, is, you know, you may fail, you may get an accident, but as long as you jump in it and keep trying, you will get better. And, you know, you got to get out of your mindset of yeah. that you're going to crash. Even those, uh, those big things like that, where it really puts you back, not, not just like financially or the car, things like that, but mentally it puts you back like that. So 
really cool to see you kind of uh, overcome that. How long have you been uh, tracking cars? I've gone to the drag strip maybe since, I don't know, since I had a license, you know, <laughs> even maybe before that. So uh, I'm 32 now. So, you know, it's when I was 16. So at least it's 16 years of being into the car scene and going to track. As far as actually road racing and going to like grid life events, things like that, it started with the very first grid life. That was uh, my first event, uh, my brother's first event. And ever since then, we've always gone back to grid life. Honda meet events, uh, GPS track time, CGI. So since then, which I believe was 2014, we've kind of continued that road racing theme. What was the first uh, track that you went to? Uh, first track was Gingerman. Gingerman? Yep. Walk, walk us through your first uh, track day, leading up to it, so, uh, during it, all, all of it. So like I said before, I had the TC that I've been building since, you know, I was 16 years old, had it forever. Uh, finally, after college, I got money to build it up. And that's what I did. Turbocharger, it's really excited to hit the track. Month, month or two right before the track day, ended up blowing my engine. I already had my ticket. Of course, they're non-refundable. So I uh, ended up going there with my brother as well. And him being a big brother, helped out his baby bro and actually split his time in half with me. So instead of him having, let's just say, 10 track sessions, he only had five and I had the other five. And it was cool. I mean, it was good. I was so, you know, I was so glad and, you know, appreciative of the fact that he gave up half his time. But so I got to learn out there, uh, got to hit the track with his car, which is actually this one over here. Uh, and that, yeah, that was the first first time I hit the track. Was that also his first track day? Yeah, it was both of our track okay, days. Yep. Cool. Was it still a weekend thing at that point? Yeah, it was a weekend thing too. Okay. And it was kind of just sitting it up too. So like the concert at first, it was something you, you had to pay like separate. So I remember a funny thing about that first event, like, Everybody was standing outside the fence, just looking at the concert. Uh -huh. Nobody went in, and it was empty right in front of it. So then they were like, you know what, fuck it, everybody go in. And then we all just had a great time and just rushed in there. Ever since you started to uh, track cars, uh, specifically the road racing stuff, or the road course stuff, what, kind, what type of stuff have you done since then? Have you done any like competition? Um, anything like that, or has it just been track, open track days? Uh, for, it's only been open track days. Um, honestly, it's just me just trying to get better. I do have a, a lap timer that I keep just to kind of gauge where I'm at. Uh, and before I go into like time attack tiers, I wanted to see, wanted to be able to get to at least to that, to that level. You know, I see people with way less horsepower than I have mm -hmm. that are crushing me on time. Yeah. So I at least want to get there and at least want to know these tracks before entering the event. What's the uh, Fast and Furious quote? <laughs> you can't just jump in the ring because you oh, think you can box guys. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I, I've seen some guys go into competition and then after that event, they're like, yeah, I was, I'm, I'm not ready at all. <laughs> so. I see people die, like, first track event, they're in intermediate. Oh, yeah, yeah I've seen that, that before. Too. And they're the same thing, like, well, I'm not ready for this level. Yeah. yeah. What's one piece of advice you would give to someone who's trying to do their first track day? Um, Maybe something that you wish you'd have known before you did your first one. Number one, have fun. Uh, be safe out there. Know, kind of understand the track etiquette a little bit, you know, get to know the flags, things like that. I remember a couple of times when out there, I didn't really pay attention to the flag color or couldn't remember them. Right, mm -hmm. so I'm like, what, what is that? What does that flag mean with the uh, yellow and blue stripes? Oh, that means to let the guy pass me. <laughs> <laughs> that means there's a race and you're not in. Exactly, it. <laughs> exactly what it means. So know that, and then last thing, what I see all the time is, don't worry about how fast your car is. Go out there and have fun. So I have a lot of people that I talk to that say, hey, oh, my car needs new coilovers. I need a sway bar, or whatever the case may be. They're a little reluctant to hit the track because of those things, but mm -hmm. don't hit excuses. Go out there, have fun, and be safe. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's one of the things that I have to remind myself sometimes too because I'm so fixated on, on becoming better and like oh I'm not my times are slow this and that and this and that and like I just have to sit back and be like okay relax we're here to have fun just enjoy it because you're supposed to have fun right exactly and if you're sitting there stressing like what's the whole point of doing all of it 100% right? so, and then to add to that uh the second part you said about uh how how guys or or, or girls anyone is out there and they're they're not essentially making an excuse like I don't have this part yet or that part yet like dude just just get the car, go out there and, and drive and have yep. fun, right? So 100% agree with that. All right, outside of cars and driving, uh, what other interests and hobbies do you have? Number one, uh, family guy. Uh, you know, I, lo I love being a dad. Um, you know, kids are starting school, things like that. So I love that aspect of it. But as far as other interests would be sports. I'm big into sports, uh, video games. What else? Um, sports, video games, cars, obviously. But, that's, you know, that's pretty much it, you know? Yeah. Uh, and just hanging out with family. That's, well, that's what I love. To back that up, 
um, the family thing. It, it's huge, and I 100% believe you because when you rolled up at a Honda meet, it was like all family, like four or five trailers, and you guys had like the kids there, the wives there, absolutely everybody there. And I was I was a little bit, little bit jealous. <laughs> so I was like, man, I want my family here, all my close friends here too, just to kind of share that time because just looking at what you guys were doing and how you had your whole family there, it was kind of one of those family trips, right? Like, oh, it's it's Honda meet time. Is that time of the year for us to have that trip? And yep. To see that, it was really cool to see. So Yeah, so I mean, if you guys see us at Honda Meet or anywhere else, don't be shy to stop by. We love, again, like you said, family is important. So we love growing our track family as well. Uh, we typically grilling out, having a good time, drinking beers when we're not racing. So, you know, if you see us, stop by because we love meeting new people. We love hearing new stories. Uh, and we love to just sit down and eat with new people we just met. All right, well, that pretty much wraps it up. Thanks uh, a lot for tuning in, guys. Uh, if you liked the video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you want to stay up to date with myself as a driver, and the progress of my Civic and also more track cars like this, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. If you guys have any questions uh, for Alberto, I'll have his social media up for you guys to follow and to ask some questions if you guys have any. And if you guys have any questions for me, go ahead and put them down in the comment section down below. Until then, stay safe, stay smooth, and we'll see you guys later. Later, guys.